Hey art folks, it's Shade, and today I have another Animal Artist Collective video for you. If you don't know what the Animal Artist Collective is, it is a group founded by Denise Soden and Jennifer Charlie to bring awareness to a different animal every month. And this month our guest artist is Sarah Newberry. She has some amazing work. I'll have her link in the description below, so definitely check her out. So the theme for this month was extinct animals, which is really exciting because in a way it's not as depressing as animals that are endangered because some of these animals had nothing to do with us. <laughs> And the animal that I chose was the dwarf elephant. Now you may be wondering why it is that the thing that I'm painting does not look anything like an elephant. Well, that's because uh, there's a story. And I chose the dwarf elephant because I've always thought that it's so cool that they may be the inspiration behind the cyclops myth. So if you know what a cyclops is, it is a one-eyed giant. This comes from Greek mythology and the cyclopses were actually servants of the god Vulcan. The most famous cyclops come from the Odyssey and that's basically where we get our idea of this giant man-eating cyclops from. BT dubs, the Odyssey is better than the Iliad, fight me. So you might be wondering, how in the world is an elephant related to the Cyclops myth? In the skull of the elephant, there is a big hole right in the middle for the nasal cavity, basically where the trunk goes. But if you look at it and you don't know anything about elephant anatomy and you've seen human skulls before, you think, well, I guess that's where the eye should go. But there's just like one and it's humongous. And you might also be wondering, why in the world would they think this about elephants? Elephants are huge. Well, that's why they're dwarf elephants. The dwarf elephants could have skulls that are a lot closer to ours. And so I could kind of see how that mistake had happened because dwarf elephants had been extinct for a long time before the Greeks could have encountered their skulls. And actually, there were no elephants on the continent at that time. So they encountered these remains in caves when they were exploring and they came up with an explanation for why they were there, which I think is pretty cool. Something really cool about the dwarf elephant is that they started out as regular elephants, but then they swam. And I guess elephants can swim pretty darn good because they swam all the way to these tiny islands in the Mediterranean. And apparently this is a known effect of large animals living on tiny islands is that they become tiny too because it is too difficult to be a large animal in such a small space. It's difficult to feed yourself. You have more risk from predators. So it's just better to become small. And so when we say dwarf elephants, you have to really think about how tiny they are. Like they could come up to your knee or maybe be like three feet tall. So that is like a tiny baby bite-sized elephant. So at first I was just thinking to depict the skeleton of the dwarf elephant, but I kept thinking more and more about the cyclops and I thought it was so cool and I decided I wanted to do a sort of illustration similar to the one that I did for the Tasmanian devil. This one had a bit more inspiration of scientific textbooks where you have like all of these figures labeled and things like that. And I had a lot of fun putting in all of these different tiny pieces and illustrating the painting in the end. I began by putting down things that I didn't want to lose under the wash that I was going to put down. So I used an ink that chemically bonds with the paper and I watered it down so that I just got a gray line because I didn't want it to be totally black. And I went around all of the pictures and for super duper tiny details, I also used a Copic multiliner. All of the calligraphy is my own calligraphy, 
which is always kind of nerve wracking to do. After I put in all of the outlines, I taped the painting down and covered it with this Bister ink, which I also use in the Tasmanian Devil painting. This ink and this ink color is really traditional, so I thought that it was a perfect addition to age this painting. And I didn't want to use coffee because I wasn't certain about the longevity of the painting if I use something like coffee or tea instead. Finally, after that, I started painting. I used Kors Payne's Gray to paint in all of the bones and the example of the sculpture. In addition to that, I also used some white gouache to bring out the lights on top of this toned paper and a little bit of a colored pencil to give it some texture. In the end, I really like how it turned out and I started thinking about a sort of different reality in which cyclopses are totally normal. You probably noticed that the cyclops I have has tusks and like what? Cyclopses don't normally have tusks. Well, I decided that cyclopses, when they are prepubescent, they have tusks and just like when we have baby teeth, they fall out and also this whole idea of man-eating cyclopses from the Odyssey is just propaganda because clearly look at their teeth, they are herbivores, so they are all vegetarians and actually quite docile. But because of their great height, we were extremely afraid of them and made up all of these kinds of stories. And now in class, the kids have to learn about the real story behind Cyclopses and how their skull is almost identical to ours and they have the same number of bones in their body as we do. The only big difference is that when they are prepudescent, they are three times our height and they can grow to be four or five times our height in adulthood. So yeah, I kind of went all over the place with this prompt. I really, really enjoyed this painting so much. I feel like I kind of went to another world or a possibility of history in doing it. And I really wanted whoever got this painting to feel the same way. As usual, all of the paintings in the Animal Artist Collective are available for sale and 50% of the proceeds of this painting would go to the Odyssey Conservation Trust. I chose them because they have a holistic approach to conservation and they care not only about animals but the environment and also the people around them. So this is called the One Health Approach. And considering that my painting is very much about the combination of humans and animals, I thought that that was totally appropriate. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and this painting. I know I did. And please definitely go check out everybody else in the Animal Artist Collective. Thank you so much to my patrons for always being there with me.
The link to buy this painting is in the description below, so you will definitely be helping out a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. And until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye.